<laughs> Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today is my setup for my curated bookshelf project. What this means is that I'm going to take all of my books that I did not rate four or five stars, so that's three stars and under, and then I'll put them in a big pile and then decide which ones I want to keep and which ones I want to get rid of. This is because I only have this one bookcase and it's I'm running out of space on it. So let's get started. All right, so now I've sorted, I've taken the books out that I remember not liking a lot, so the ones that I've probably given three or two stars to on Goodreads, and then the rest of what's on there are the books that I actually really like. All right, I'm now surrounded by the books that I just don't really care that much about. So let's see which ones I want to keep and which ones I am going to get rid of. First up we have Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by not J.K. Rowling, like the cover would suggest, but by John Tiffany and Jack Thorne. I did not like this book at all. How can I get rid of something that has got the words Harry Potter written right across the cover? I am going to hold on to this. Then, there is the Hogwarts Library. If I remember correctly, I gave Quidditch Through the Ages and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them three stars. But again, they're part of the Hogwarts set, so there's no way I'm getting rid of these. Here we have a German book, Erst wieder da, by uh, Timo Vermes. Now this one was translated into English as He's Back, I believe. It's about Hitler coming back to life. And uh, my brother gave me this. I really didn't like it all that much. Uh, and knowing my brother, he will not be offended if I give this to someone who might like this. So I'm going to give this to a friend who I think might enjoy this. Next up, I have Shakespeare's sonnets. I fought my way through those last year and ended up giving it three stars. And I am going to hold on to this because I feel like this is a book that I might want to get back to one day. Then there is almost the entire Lemony Snicket series. So I don't know where the fir first one's gone. Some of these I gave four stars to, most of them I gave three stars to. But because it's part of a series, I'm not going to get rid of the entire series, so I am going to keep the entire series. This one is another German one by the author Robert Löhr. The book is called Der Schachautomat. This book's not mine. I bought this for my brother's birthday and he kindly lent it to me. So now it's time for me to send that back. Hello, Beetle. Then there's this kitten. I'd say this is a two-star kitten and a push. So I'm getting rid of you. Mwah. Roald Dahl, James and the Giant Peach. Yeah, this is one I don't really care too much about, so I will donate this. I'm sure someone will enjoy this a lot more than I did. Similarly, with uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, this is actually one I found in a skip, I believe, and I didn't really get too much out of this. Thanks, Beetle. So I'm getting rid of this one as well. City of Bones. This one's a charity shop find that I bought because uh, it was so popular on booktube. I did not care for it one bit and I am getting rid of this. Oscar Wilde and the Candlelight Murders by Giles Brandreth. This is a book that sounds like it's exactly my sort of thing, but it wasn't. I found it quite dull and I will not be reading the other ones in this series and I am going to get rid of this. The Craft of Research by Wayne Booth, Gregory Colom and Joseph Williams. It's a fairly dry but also useful book about how to do research and I feel like this is going to be useful to me in the future so I will keep this. Lirina Bohr's Blut Orangen. This is one that my mum sent me over after I asked her to please send me some German books. Unfortunately I didn't care for this one all that much so I'm still trying to think about how to best get rid of this because I don't think it's going to be a big hit with the charity shops but maybe I can give this to a German speaking friend. These ones I took with me from Germany so they're the Francois Lelore. I don't actually know what they're called in English but they're a series of books. They're quite twee and I didn't really care for them all that much. I've weirdly held on to them until now but I know I'm not going to reread them so I will be getting rid of these. 
This one is called A Girl's Guide to Dating a Geek by Omi M. Anouye. And my brother got me this after I started dating my now husband. I'm not going to read it again. I think I've got the whole dating a geek thing down now, but I'm also not going to get rid of it because it has sentimental value. Ooh, this one's a tricky one. Timothy Keller, The Reason for God. What do you think, Bill? Burn? He says burn it. The funny thing is he actually bought this for me, but his spiritual beliefs have changed since. I got through about one chapter of this and I found it very tedious and yes, I will be getting rid of it. Next up is another book that my husband got me. This one is The Carpet People by Terry Pratchett. This was quite a nice read actually. I ended up giving it three stars because it wasn't, it really wasn't one of my favourite books, but I still enjoyed it quite a bit and I reckon I'll be up for a reread of that at some point, so I'm holding on to that one. Here we have Edgar Allan Poe's Spirits of the Dead, Tales and Poems. This took me a long time to read. I did not care for his tales very much. I sort of enjoyed the poems, but I don't feel like I'm going to reread them soon, so I'll probably be giving this to a friend as well. Next up is Randall Munro's What If. I believe my brother gave me this one. Or did you give me this one? Tasting Some in nerd life. in my life gave me this. And I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I tend to not give non-fiction books four stars very easily because they have to be particularly gripping for me to do that. But this was a fun little read and I'm going to keep it on my bookshelf. I'm sure I'll pick it up again sometime in the future. Then there is Gathering Blue by Lois Lowry. It's part of the Giver series anyway. So even though I didn't enjoy this as much as I did the first book, The Giver, because it's part of a series, I will keep this as well. And then we have Morton Rue's Die Welle. In English, it's called The Wave, I believe. I'm not even sure now if I actually gave this three stars. I think it might be a four star one. Either way, this is an important book. It shaped me quite a bit when I first read it as a teenager, and I'm definitely holding on to this. Okay, first up we have two Jane Austens. Sense and Sensibility and Mansfield Park. That's three and two stars respectively. I really don't know what to do about that. I didn't enjoy them hugely, but I am quite a fan of Jane Austen and I would like to have her collected works. So I am going to be holding on to them for now. But if I run out of space, they're probably the first ones I'm getting rid of. Then there's this book, Asperger's in Love. I read this one, I finished it this year actually. And uh, it's by Maxine Aston. And the reason I'm keeping this is because my husband, who bought this and who suggested we read this, is only about a third of the way through. So I feel like it would be unkind to him to get rid of this now. Right, Bill? Mm -hmm. Then there is this book, uh, Sternkinder by Clara Asher Pinkhoff. I believe this is a collection of short stories for children about the Holocaust and again I can't remember if I actually gave it this three stars or if it was a four star book either way it's an important book it's a book from my childhood and I'm planning to reread this so keeping that then there's Little Women by Louisa May Alcott I think I gave this one three stars and I will be rereading this this is The White Tiger by Aravind Adiga if you don't know my opinion on this watch the video I did titled Dear Male Writers. It's a bad book and I'm getting rid of this as soon as I can. This one I got last time I went to visit my parents in my hometown. It's a retelling of Germanic mythology. I found it quite dry so I'll find someone who will appreciate this more than me. Then there's the novel in the viola by Natasha Solomon. Again I don't really remember all that much about I think it was fine but I don't think I'm going to reread this. Here, this is The Pointless Book, which is, I believe, written by some YouTuber. It's a book that my husband and I got from his aunt and uncle uh, as a wedding present. So even though we've barely looked at this, I feel like it has some sentimental value and I will keep it on the bookshelf. And maybe one day I'll actually open it. Next up, there's Anhold 1222. This one's for one that I got as part of the charity shop challenge. I read this, it was okay, I'm not going to reread this. So, away it goes. 
Then there's More Fool Me by Stephen Fry. This is the third part of his autobiography. And it was a very disappointing read because I really enjoyed the first two parts of his autobiography. The reason I won't be getting rid of this is because it's a signed copy that I got when I saw him reading from it. So he did a book tour when this book was published and then, you know, you could get it signed and I had a little chat with him in German and that was lovely. So I'm going to keep this on my bookshelf even though I'll never read this again. Helen Fielding's Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason. No. And then two Nick Hornby's. I tried, I really tried getting into Nick Hornby. I don't know what people like about Nick Hornby, but it's definitely not my style. Mark Haddon, The Red House. He was obviously best known for The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Unfortunately, this one is not half as good and I really didn't like it. So, bye bye. This is Miss Miller's Feeling for Snow by Peter Hook. This is actually your book, Bill. Do you want it? Nah. I'm taking this as a no I and I will and I will donate this. Then there's this German book called Das Wohltemperierte Gehirn. It's an okay book about how music relates, how people relate to music and I might look at this one again so I'm holding on to this. First up we have a novel called Aus den Fugen by Alain Claude Solza. I didn't care for it all that much, so I will get rid of this. Then Sue Townsend, The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole. This was also a present by my husband, but I don't think he'll be too offended if I donate it, will you? I will cry for days. He will cry for days. I gave it three stars to it. It was okay, but I'm not going to reread this, so I feel like it's better off in someone else's hands. Rainer M. Schröder, any German who loved reading as a child will know his name. He churned out uh, historical YA and children's literature when I was growing up. I don't know if he's still going. These two are part of a series about a girl who gets exiled to Australia in the 18th, in the 19th century. I only gave three stars to. Still, there's no way I'm getting rid of these. This is one of my favorite authors as a child. And then finally we have, please no, please no, Beetle, no, no, why is that boy? Finally we have Kenneth Graham's The Wind in the Willows. I gave this one three stars too. I didn't quite get on with the style, but it's such a classic that I know I'm going to reread this and try and give us another chance. And it was okay the first time through as well, but I think this is the sort of book that you'll get more out of on a second read. Right, this is it. I'm going to count up the books now and then tell you the statistics at the end. Okay, so after counting up all the books, I am getting rid of 22 books and I'm keeping 32 books. That means I've managed to free up an entire shelf on the bookcase, which can now be filled with other books that I actually love and want to keep. So. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> so, from now on, I'm going to add a little section to each of my monthly wrap-ups where I tell you which of the books I read this month I'm actually keeping and which I'm getting rid of. And that way, hopefully, I'm on my way to a nice curated bookshelf that really shows my taste and really just shows my favourite books. Thank you for watching. Bye. I made just oh no please Beetle don't eat that